speaking about evangelization, I'll say one word about spiritual depth. Depth is not in the traditional Christian vocabulary referring to the spiritual matters. And yet uh, it makes a meaning in, in the world context. A person is a deep person, means a person who thinks deeply, relates deeply with others, or got values that are profound. Referring to Mother Teresa, people said she was deep. She was extremely active. She was continuously busy, but she was a deep person. And uh, other persons who may not be belong to our religion also, they have said such and such a person is deep because of the profound values, highly respected values that they entertain, which they incarnated. And so all the more for a Christian to be a genuine Christian would call for some depth. Understanding God's word, not merely at the surface, in literal sense only, but at, at depth. Our mystics have done that. Persons like uh, Mother St. Teresa of Avila, St. John of the Cross, writings that these great saints and others have uh, um, made are greatly respected, not only in our religion, but also in the Indian society by other religions. And they look to persons who incarnate these values in their life. They very much appreciate Christians who are active in service, and we ought to be very active in service. They admire them. But they are touched by persons who are also deep at the same time. They are touched by Mother Teresa. They admire Mother Teresa for the good work she did, but they were touched by Mother Teresa because of her depth. And that depth calls for some effort, personal spiritual effort. Sometimes we think we are very good because we have not done anything very harmful. That alone does not provide us with depth. We need to make a little personal effort. We might use the word spiritual discipline, asceticism, mortification. Some words sound very oldish for some people, but the concept of Jesus' cross being present in our lives, life is very important. I've often insisted that if you wanted to be a good priest, a good brother, a good person in Christian life, keep close to those who suffer, the very poor people, those who have been affected by tsunami that happens only once in a way, those that are in the slums, in the, in the interior places. As a missionary, that's kind of ideal that we try, always try to foster. Keep close to them. Without saying they are teaching you something, they invite you to depth because without depth, your work among them will not be meaningful. And that depth is not only in the quality of life, but also quality of relationship, quality of the meaning that you bring into your life and into the lives of others. So we do not measure our success in evangelization merely in the, in the speedy results, but in the depth it affects. Are we touching people at their depths? Are we only just interesting them in some superficial level of analysis? And we also do that, a social analysis, psychological analysis. We discuss about leadership qualities. We speak about uh, human skills. All these are wonderful. But this uh, calls, uh, uh, Christian depth calls for something deeper. We speak about uh, uh, renunciation. We speak about God experience. We speak about uh, mystical relationship with uh, higher values, a uh, higher person. These concepts are much deeper than what we read in the self-improvement books day after day. So when persons are uh, deep in this manner, they will have uh, an inclination like Moses had to withdraw into the mountains for some period of time to pray. That time is not lost. Jesus withdrew into the mountains or into the into a, some remote place in order to spend time in prayer with his father. And so did Paul in his life, early part of his life. So did many mystic who withdrew into the forests or into a monastery or in any other isolated place. And today's context, I would say, it is not only really geographical withdrawal that is important, it is a spiritual withdrawal. You know how to suspend your in the middle of activity, even in a street, in a railway station, in the airport. You are able to sit for a quiet while and relate with God and motivate, recharge your batteries, your spiritual batteries. Recharge your, your um, eagerness to share the gospel with other people. 
and become creative. And then you find it is possible. Even in a very no noisy circumstance, you are able to keep calm and uh, replan your work for the coming day. And uh, such persons will not go in for what was called provocative ways of, of evangelizing, uh, despising other religions, uh, ridiculing other people's practices. Other people's practices which I do not understand, I say it may have a deeper meaning than, than I understand and a different connotation than what I see, their images, their practices, traditions. So I, in itself, in themselves, I do not consider them meaningful. But since they are meaningful to someone else, I respect them. I respect them. And because I respect them, I also have respect for whatever other people hold dear, precious, valuable. So uh, this good relationship, instead of being a negative, uh, force in your life, it's going to be an additional advantage to you because when we respect others, others spontaneously respect us and what we stand for. And when we are willing to listen to them, they are also willing to listen to us. That's why St. Paul, it is said, spoke the whole night sometimes with his uh, disciples, with his, with his followers and discuss at length about what he understood about the message of God, the early scriptures, the teachings of Jesus. And in this he said, with many arguments and talks, which means to say, not argument, uh, argument so as to humiliate the other person, but discussion, giving reasons and ideas. And uh, an atmosphere is created where when that person called Paul moved out from there, they shed tears. He did not humiliate them. He did not say, show he is smarter than them. So he, this was not a, a evangelization that uh, embarrasses others, hurts others, and humiliates others, something that encourages and uplifts and strengthens them and invites them to their depth, not to my ideas. Maybe my ideas have contributed the occasion, but I am inviting you to your depths where Jesus is waiting for them, where meet, we meet Christ. The word mystical experiences uh, uh, sound very oldish for some people, but uh, in uh, themselves, uh, they are not old, they are never outfashioned because it is coming to the core of your being where you find your deeper identity in Christ as children of God, as person de destined to an eternal destiny. And therefore, when we move into our center, move into our depths, we are uh, meeting, we are standing face, with, face to face with Christ. And this vocabulary is especially attractive to Asians, people with a Buddhist background people with a Hindu background, they understand this language. They read the John, St. John of the Cross. They read the Ten Days of Avila. I know that many uh, monks of the Ramakrishna tradition happy to read the Confessions, Imitation of Christ, because they are searching for depth. And it will be a great pity in, in the con context of religious sharing. We are not able to offer something deep and profound of which we are convinced.